What could the Bound for Glory main event be now that Eric Young has won the Impact Wrestling Heavyweight Championship? The authors of Pain are now free agents released from the WWE. Would they be a good fit in Impact Wrestling? Will Rohit Raju win one match as the X Division Champion? An interview with the North's Josh Alexander. All this and more are coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. This is the walking weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're listening to Shooting Up North. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Congratulations to Eric Young for becoming the new Impact Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Defeats Eddie Edwards on the last show. And a few people on social media seem to have an issue with this. A lot of dumb comments out there. I'm going to start with the dumb comments early. A lot of people calling Eric Young a jobber. Uh, he couldn't make it in the WWE. Um... Our jobber in in the WWE goes to Impact Wrestling and instantly becomes a world champion. Let's get something straight here. Let's get something straight here. Eric Young is anything but a jobber. Eric Young is an extremely talented wrestler who's been doing this for a very, 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 very long time. And a lot of people are, are under the impression on social media that this is the first time he's become a world champion. And that's not the case. He's been a world champion before when he was in Impact Wrestling. He was a TNA heavyweight champion. And now he's the Impact Wrestling world champion. And it's well-deserved. Not a jobber. It's just plain stupidity on on the um, on the parts of people on social media for even insinuating that uh, Eric Young is a jobber. Uh, Eric Young is well deserving of the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. He came to Impact Wrestling after being released by the WWE, who didn't really handle him to the best of his abilities, and uh, signed an exclusive two year contract with Impact Wrestling. He's under contract, exclusive contract, and uh, he's, like I said, well-deserving of the Impact Wrestling World's Heavyweight Championship. Uh, So again, congratulations to Eric Young. So what does this mean for the Bound for Glory main event? What does this mean for the Bound for Glory main event? I know it was rumored... It was rumored that uh, the main event was going to be Eddie Edwards defending the Impact Wrestling World title against Ken Shamrock. Thankfully, that's not going to be the case because that match really didn't really interest me at all, to be honest. I mean, okay, Eddie Edwards was Ken Shamrock. If uh, Ken Shamrock showed up as, uh, if he answered the open challenge, okay, that would be fine. But the main event at the biggest show of the year, you know, Ken Shamrock against uh, Eddie Edwards for the Impact title, just it just didn't appeal to me. That it, it didn't appeal to a lot of people, to be honest. And uh, thankfully, it doesn't look like they're going that route. Uh, so Eric Young. So what do we? So what do we do? So what are they going to do? Here's here's my thought, and I think it's it's quite obvious what they're going to do, actually. So the Bound for Glory main event is going to be Eric Young defending the Impact Wrestling World Championship against Rich Swan. That's that's my thought on what the main event is going to be, and I think a lot of people will agree with me on that. I, Eric Young taking out um, Rich Swan. Rich Swan, quote unquote, retires uh, after he actually gets a victory over uh, over Eric Young at, at Slamversary. Actually, he pinned uh, Eric Young to eliminate him from the match, so he can use that as well as uh, a means of getting a title shot. But I think the storyline is going to be Rich Swan. Doctors have told him that he can't wrestle anymore, that he has to retire. But becoming a world champion is is a dream of his, and he doesn't want to let go of that dream. And he's going to go against doctor's orders, and he's going to risk permanent injury to become the Impact Wrestling world champion. I, I think that they might be going with that storyline. I think that would be a great storyline for them to go with. And I really think people would really 
rally behind Rich Swan on this one, uh, on that storyline. And it will be a tremendous, tremendous main event. It could be a, a no disqualification match. It could be an unsanctioned match. It could be, well, it would have to be sanctioned. I think, I think if it's going to be for the Impact Wrestling World Championship, it's going to have to be a sanctioned match. Uh, so, so, so scratch the unsanctioned match, but it's going to be, uh, it, whatever, whatever type match it is, it's going to be a tremendous match. And I think it'll be a great, great main event for Bound for Glory. And, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully they go their route. I, 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 I really feel deep down that that's what they're going to do. I really feel deep down that that's what they're going to do. I, I hope it's not a triple threat. I hope it's not Eric Young versus Rich Swan versus Eddie Edwards. I, I hope it's just one on one Eric Young versus Rich Swan. Rich Swan coming for the title. Rich Swan coming for revenge. Just his dream, like I said, to become the world champion. And it, w- it would just, just be a tremendous storyline. And they could really build it up. They got plenty of time. It's only September 5th. Bound for Glory is, is more than a month away. So it'll be a. They have plenty of time. I'm, I'm getting excited thinking about it, man. There will be plenty of time for them to build up that. They've already started building it up, and it's cool that they're not really rushing it. They're taking their time with it, uh, but now they can really, really start building up uh, the Eric Young Rich Swan uh, match at Bound for Glory. So hopefully they will go that route. Rohit Raju, X Division champion. I really hope, I really hope that Impact Wrestling lets him successfully defend the X Division championship. A few times before he loses it, because we're seeing a lot of uh, pictures of him right now. He's taking a lot of really fun pictures with the exhibition champion. I'm sorry, with the exhibition title, and uh, he's having a lot of fun with it. And uh, but we're not really seeing him defending the title. I know he just won it, uh, but next week uh, we got Chris Bay against TJP. Um, I, I'm supposing the supposing the winner of that match is going to get an exhibition championship match. But could we, could we see Rohit Raju on a few shows successfully defending that title? Because I would really hate for Rohit Raju not to defend the title once, and then his, in his first title defense, he drops the title to a TJP or or back to Chris Bay. Um, please let let just just let Rohit Raju, uh, and I've said this on on many past shows, incredible talent, deserves the X Division Championship. Uh, and uh, he also deserves to successfully defend it a few times. So please, Impact Wrestling, let Rohit Raju successfully defend that title a few times. Uh, I would absolutely love to see it. Uh, there's an article. There's an article out that was put. Um, let me pull up the article here about NXT crippling Impact in um, in the ratings. And I think it's a it's a it's a silly article. I just want to pull here here W. Uh, WWE NXT cripples Impact Wrestling's viewership with Tuesday competition. Did, did they? Did, does any, did anybody? Even though you know people listening and myself prefer Impact Wrestling to NXT to WWE's NXT. Did, did anybody really believe that uh, when NXT decided to air on a Tuesday that Impact Wrestling had any shot at all? In um, defeating them in the ratings. Now I'm not not being negative here. I'm, I'm being realistic. I, I, there was there was no way that they were gonna defeat NXT in the ratings, and to come out with an article that's titled "NXT Cripples Impact Wrestling's Viewership." Uh, first of all, they didn't really cripple the viewership. I mean, the viewership went. They were uh, NXT. I'm sorry, uh, Impact Wrestling is averaging about 150, 155 thousand viewers uh, per show. And that's just a first run on Access TV. They lost 50,000 viewers. They lost about 50,000 viewers. Is, is that crippling Impact Wrestling viewership? Are they, are they also taking into... Are they also factoring in the, all the shows that may be DVR'd? Uh, so people can watch it later, or people that th- decide to watch NXT, you know, and maybe watch at a later day on Twitch, or maybe wait for it to come on Impact Plus. Are they factoring those numbers in? Uh, they probably aren't. But the bottom line is, it's it's not it's not a, a cause for celebration for NXT because uh, it was it was it was expected. It was expected that uh, NXT was going to draw bigger numbers, and they're they're on a channel that um, that reaches a lot more people uh, than Impact Wrestling in the first place. So it's not a it's it's not a time for 
uh, it's not a huge victory. Let's just say for for NXT, it was expected. They were expected to draw draw more viewers on Tuesday, and. Very interesting. One thing I really uh, enjoyed, somebody had asked Carl Anderson what he thought about NXT uh, being on uh, last Tuesday and next Tuesday. And um, Carl Anderson just came out and said, NXT sucks. And I, I love that answer. Love that answer. Carl Anderson is an Impact Wrestling guy now. Uh, he's supporting his promotion, supporting his company. You know, he's back in his company. Just NXT sucks. He could have came out he could have said, you know, some people might have expected him to say, oh, NXT, I got a lot of really good talent there. Competition's going to be tough for us. Um, or or, or um, we'll do our best, but um, I'm not sure if we could uh, overtake the numbers of NXT. He could have said any st- anything like that or something along those lines. But no, he came out and said, NXT sucks. So good for Carl Anderson. Good for Carl Anderson, man. So Authors of Pain, Authors of Pain, Razor and Acom are now free agents released from the WWE. And I'm thinking if they would be a good fit in Impact Wrestling. Another monster tag team uh, released by the WWE. And I, I think they would be a very good fit in Impact Wrestling. I'm just thinking of them against uh, the Good Brothers, of course, them against the Rascals, uh, them against the North would would be a uh, would be a very good match. Uh, I could see them actually aligning themselves with Eric Young. Uh, maybe Eric Young, um, form a, they form a faction in Impact Wrestling, Eric Young and uh, the Authors of Pain, or whatever their, their new names are going to be, because I'm sure the WWE would would own uh, the name Authors of Pain, uh, but yeah, I would I would uh, I would uh, like to see it. Also, the uh, the Ascension is another team that's out there. BQ mentioned that to me uh, the other day. Uh, the Ascension is another team that's out there. I wouldn't mind seeing an Impact Wrestling, but Authors of Pain, Authors of Pain, uh, as they say, currently free agents. I'm sure there's a 90 day. Um, they have to wait 90 days. Uh, no, there are no compete clause in their contract. And uh, I, I wouldn't mind. I, uh, I tweeted I wouldn't mind to see them in, in Impact Wrestling, and I tagged Scott Demore. So let's see what happens. I mean, they, they would have great matches with the Rascals. Uh, the Rascals, it, it would be a the the monster tag team against uh, the High Flyers would be a, a really really good match as well. And um, hey, I wouldn't mind seeing them. I wouldn't mind seeing them in Impact Wrestling. There would just be another, another uh, tag team to add to the division, and. Um, I, I could see them going in right in right in immediately and feuding with the Good Brothers, just going right after the Good Brothers, and um, they they could have a, a very very good feud. And I'm sure by then by then they'll be wrestling in front of crowds again, and so um, could be a very exciting feud. And so it's something for Scott Demore and Don Callis to consider. And uh, against the North, they would be uh, as, as I mentioned, they would be a um, a great opponent for the North as well, but the, the North, of course, could have a, a great match uh, with just about any any tag team in the world. And speaking of the North, I had the opportunity to interview one half of the North, the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. And we spoke about a number of things, including the Motor City Machine Guns, the Good Brothers, what he's doing outside of Impact Wrestling, holding the belts for a record 383 days. And, well, I'm not going to make you wait any longer. I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, here is my interview with the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. Very happy to welcome back Impact Wrestling superstar, the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. Josh, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you. It's good to be here, man. Especially if you name the show after, you know, my tag team. Yeah, yeah, North shooting up North. I, I, I gotta... say shoot, shooting up the. I, you know, I'll be honest. I almost called myself. I just want to get your opinion on this. I don't know. I don't think I've asked you. I was thinking about calling myself the talking weapon, but I decided not to do that. <laughs> w- w- would that have been okay with you if I called myself the talking weapon? Would have been completely fine because I'm not known as the guy that talks. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> But when, when you call yourself the walking weapon, you can you can back it up. And me being the talking weapon, I don't know if I can back it up as well as you can back up the walking weapon. So I uh, yeah. I decided not to not not to run with this. So just shooting up north, 
and uh, we'll, we'll stick with that. So I wanted to ask you, I know what happened a few weeks ago, and I just want to know how your chest was feeling after taking those rapid-fire kibashi chops from your son. Oh, uh, you know what? I built up a callus over the time okay. Okay. from people like Eddie, Eddie Kingston and Eddie Edwards and El Generico and all these people that were famous for chopping me really hard. So I was prepared for my two-year-old, but uh, okay, he'll, yeah, no, he'll, he'll get there. He was really late into you there, man. I, I, I was able to feel it through the computer, so I was, I was a little bit worried about you there. <laughs> I, I would accept no less. There you go. There you go, man. So, so it, Motor City Machine Guns, new Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Well, they've had it since the anniversary. You've had the belt with uh, Ethan Page for 383 days. So, so how does it feel not having those titles after, after such a long period of time? Uh, it's obviously a new feeling because uh, after over a year-long title reign, you know, you kind of get used to having that championship around. But, uh, you know, now that we've lost it, I think uh, it gives us, even though we were so good and so heralded as a great tag team while we were champions, I think it gives us new motivation to get even better. So we're, we're trying to spin it in a positive way. Now, unfortunately, I was rooting for you to win that return match. You guys lost the return match. Uh, so, so what's next for the North? Where, where, do you, where do you go from here? Uh, I think we have to regain our tag team championships. That's the only thing we can do. That's the only thing we got our mindset on. Uh, if we're going to call, okay. you know, call the North the best tag team on planet Earth, I think we need to have the championship in whatever company we are wrestling for. So that's uh, that's the sole goal in mind, I think, for both of us. All right. Well, I, I for one, I'm hoping that you guys get the back to titles because I, I really did. I, 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 I like the titles around your waist, uh, and I, I didn't want Motor City Machine Guns. Not taking anything away from them, but I didn't want to see them as champions. I, hopefully, you get those titles back soon. Um, so, so what are your well, thoughts? I, what are you? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, said, I cut you I, out there. No problem. I said it in a promo uh, that aired on television a few weeks before the rematch. I said it's only a matter of time. And still, even though we lost the rematch, it's it's only a matter of time. You can't can't deny talent. And uh, I don't think any other tag team, even the Motor City Machine Guns, has uh, works as well as a cohesive unit as a tag team. So, you know, everybody has their time. You know, we were we said we were at the top of the mountain trying to get pushed off all along, and you know, it kind of wore us down. It's time for us to regroup and come back with, uh, you know. Uh, a new lease on life, per se. Okay. So I'm going to ask you this question, and uh, I, I hope you don't get upset, but uh, it's it's some, I'm, I'm seeing this on social media from time to time, and it kind of gets me upset. But uh, so you've had the, held the belt for 383 days, longest reign ever in Impact Wrestling, but some people are saying it's because there's been no competition in Impact Wrestling. So So how would you respond to that? Uh, well, I would have to let the other tag teams in Impact respond to that. That's not my responsibility, luckily. Uh, oh. If they, if, if people want to look at the Rascals and they want to look at TJP and Fall and they want to look at everyone else, like they're not competition, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I can say they are very good tag teams. They're competitive tag teams. I've been all around the world. I've wrestled all sorts of tag teams, whether it be in New Japan or XWE talent. And they all stack up there, and they know it. But if fans don't agree, that's up to them to make a name for themselves. We've established ourselves as the North as one of the best tag teams on planet Earth. Whether PWI Magazine recognizes it or not, doesn't matter to us. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I think we did have a lot of competition. The one knock I will have is that we never got the chance to show, like, in our entire run, uh, for, I think we did six pay-per-views, we never had a, just a two-on-two tag team match. And that's got to be the worst, worst thing I can say. We never had that chance to show the world that we can have a two-on-two tag match on a pay-per-view and steal a show. Even though we did steal many shows, steal many pay-per-views of the matches we had, the only tag team match we had was against Ken and Sammy. And they're not a legitimate tag team in my eyes. So, you know, it was a little disappointing. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I think when people comment on that, on that it's, it's really stupid. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll respond kind of angrily to them. Uh, I, I definitely agree that the North are, are, without a doubt, one of the best, if not the best tag teams in the world today. And uh, I have no doubt you'll have those belts around your waist uh, very, very soon. Uh, but that said, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on the Motor City Machine Guns? I think last time we spoke, I believe you said that they were on your um, – one of your dream lists to meet in, in the ring, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But what, what are your thoughts on Saban and Shelley as, uh, as a tag team? 
I mean, I think they're great. I grew up watching them, watching what they did for tag team wrestling. Uh, by the time we got in the ring with them, uh, I will say it's a little disappointing because you have this idea built up in your mind. As a young wrestler, as a young man, I was 18 years old watching these guys have tag team matches in companies like Ring of Honor revolutionizing pro wrestling. And then by the time we got a chance to step foot in the ring with them, you build them up on this pedestal like you're going to learn something from them. And like we're already on the level, if not beyond, where they were when they were last tagging. They they haven't tagged in so long. That's what I mean by us have being a more of a cohesive unit. Like we felt like we were in a league of our own by the time we stepped foot in the ring with them. It was it was definitely cool. You checked it off the bucket list. You know, you got that big matchup. The world got to see it. You know, we wanted them to see it, but uh, yeah, I that's the only way I can sum it up. So next question. Uh, this is the match that I really want to see and a lot of people want to see. Uh, when are we going to get the North versus the Good Brothers? That's that's a match I was kind of hoping for. Uh, I was hoping at some anniversary you guys would have been face-to-face. Uh, I know I tweeted about that a lot on social media. Uh, but when do we get that? Is, is that match in the works? Uh, I will not give any spoilers, but I would say it's an inevitability that uh, a team that is calling themselves the best tag team on earth that signs with a company where we have established that we are the tag team. We are the standard of that tag division, regardless if we have the belts or not. You know, uh, I, I think it's inevitable. Yeah, I can't wait for that. That's going to be a that's going to be a spectacular match. I kind of hope it's going to happen at Bound for Glory, uh, but uh, that remains to be seen. And I'll just keep watching Impact Wrestling. Hopefully, uh, an announcement will be, will be made soon on uh, that match. So. With COVID-19, you guys have been wrestling in, in an empty arena. So what are your thoughts on uh, wrestling in an empty arena? You know, do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? Obviously, uh, it is not as enjoyable as wrestling in front of a crowd. Uh, this is a spectator sport or form of entertainment. And if you're going to entertain anybody, I think you need a live crowd. That's It would be like a comedian doing a show in front of nobody. It's kind of difficult. So, like, our job is to react off of, uh, you know, crowd, whether, I'm not going to say, I was going to say interference, but not really interference. Like, crowd, uh, you know, they contribute as much as the wrestler when you're wrestling. You know, you, if they're not having a good time, then you're not doing your job. So, we're kind of out there doing what we think people want to see without being able to change or react to it while it's going on. So, we don't have that immediate... Uh, like judgment from a crowd to know if we did well or not. It's only when you see it on television. The only kind of gauge right now is social media. And we've been lucky to have, you know, two really good tag matches with the Machine Guns on this time. Even the pay-per-view anniversary, uh, us against Ken and Sammy was, you know, regarded as probably one of the best matches, if not the best match on the show by social media. So you get that immediate response. But uh, not being in front of a crowd is definitely weird. I got to be on an independent last Saturday for the first time since COVID. Six months I got to wrestle in front of a crowd. There was only 40 people in this building. And in my head, you would have thought there was 500 because that's just how much I missed it. That was that was a Black Label Pro match, uh, correct? Yes. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that, but since, since we brought it up, um, tr- tremendous match against Lee Moriarty. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I uh, watched it this morning. Um, great, great match. What are your thoughts on uh, Lee Moriarty? And and when I say your thoughts, I know um, there's been an announcement that he's going to be showing up on an Impact Explosion. Uh, do you think he has what it takes to to make it to the main roster? Absolutely. Uh, the only the only thing I could say that is a knock against him, which isn't even a knock, is just lack of experience. He's very young, but you know everything comes with time. And like I told him, I think he said he's only been wrestling for two or three years. Uh, he is leaps and bounds, like different planets and solar systems ahead of wherever I was two to three years in. So that's a scary thought because most people regard me as one of the better wrestlers on the planet today. So if this guy's got a head start like that way ahead of where I was, like the sky's the limit. He just has to keep at it. And uh, I think Impact would be a great place for him to uh, start, not only for him, but for the company because uh, he has a lot he can contribute. as a different style that I don't think a lot of people in the company have. So it would be nice to have him, a welcome addition. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I, like, I don't know if they announced if he signed or not, but I know he's going to be debuting on Explosion for the next couple of weeks. So I'm really, gonna, really looking forward to that. So has there been any talk about when Impact will be, in fact, back in front of a crowd again? I, you hear rumblings of like certain people trying to suggest, hey, maybe we can make this work for Bound for Glory with social distancing and like taking proper protocols. But, uh, you know, nothing's been said by management. Nothing's been alluded to by anybody that, that would be able to make a decision like that. So I'm not going to jump to conclusions. I'm saying if independents can do it, I think we can do it. But it's just all up to whether or not... Uh, you know, you want to be the first company that makes that jump, which is the problem, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of companies right now. I, I think a AEW might have done it. Eddie Edwards, completely different topic. Eddie Edwards has has this open challenge now for the Impact Wrestling World Title. Uh, any thoughts of you possibly uh, answering that challenge? I, I don't think I'll be a singles wrestler in Impact Wrestling so long as Ethan Page and myself are both there. Okay, well, I mean, you've pro- proved it time and time again that you're a tremendous singles or tag team wrestler. So whichever direction you take, you're, you're going to be highly successful. 100% yeah, successful. Yeah, to me, to, to me, you can't just throw guys together into a tag team. Like, I, I've done it several times in my career on independence, and it just doesn't work. Like, if something fits, it fits. You can't force it. You can't just, like, it's like a arranged marriage. You can't just, like... You know, tell your 14 year old he's going to marry this girl he's never met before, and then they get together and expect him to be happy forever. I mean, you're really rolling the dice. It might work one out of a thousand times, but those other 999 times, you just got two miserable people. And that's the same thing with a tag team. You throw me in a tag team with, I name anybody, I don't care, like Fulton, Desmond Xavier, TJP. I, I, I know that I get along with these people, but as a tag team, I might be completely miserable. So I and I know I know I would be completely miserable. <laughs> I've already had the thought. So okay. So so there's not one person that's in impact or not in impact that you feel that you could form a a good tag team with. Then if if it's not Ethan Page and you don't want to tag with anybody anybody at all, then that, no, that's fair. Okay, yeah. well, that's fair enough. Fair enough. All right, cool. So wrestling is coming back to Ontario. Uh, August 29th, Alpha One, your one-on-one with Mark Wheeler. September 13th, Destiny Returns, uh, one-on-one with Speedball, Mike Bailey. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on each wrestler, and, and how excited are you that uh, that that wrestling is, is finally uh, having shows again in Ontario? Uh, I, I couldn't be more excited that pro wrestling is coming back, especially locally. Uh, just like, like I said, being in front of a crowd on Saturday the first time in six months, it was... I, I felt like myself again. I, there was something missing. And, you know, that might be, that's, that's, that's just the way it is. And now, now I get to do it in my home country, my home province, with my home promotions, like Alpha One and Destiny. Those are the two promotions where I've really made my name for myself. So challenging for the Alpha Male title. I could be a five-time champion after this Saturday, live on Twitch, played by Julian. Uh, if you're not able to attend, uh, you know, that's going to be an awesome match. Mark Wheeler is one of the better up and coming talents in Ontario. And, you know, I'm someone that's well established around here. So it'll be fun. And then Destiny hit me up and they told me about a show and they said, hey, who do you think would really move the needle for, uh, you know, a title, a championship uh, opportunity? And I, the only name I could think of because of you can't bring somebody from America. You can't bring somebody from another country right now. They'd have to self isolate for two weeks before they could even step yeah. foot in the show so i said who's in canada and i said the biggest match you could possibly do is me and mike bailey there's there's no there's no bigger match in canada COVID or not between two canadians that you could do right now if i'm kevin steen in canada he's el generico that's just my opinion i think he's one of the most talented wrestlers on this entire planet and Every company is doing a disservice by not having him on their roster, but you know that's just my opinion. So we're gonna get together at Destiny in front of I think it's it might be a little bit more than 50 fans now, but uh, we're gonna get together there and we're gonna put on one of the best Canadian matches you're ever gonna see. I guarantee it. Well, that's gonna be a tremendous match. I'm a big fan of Mike Bailey. Um, like, do you do you do can you do scouting like for Impact Wrestling if you're 
Like, can you go like to Scott Demore or Don Callis and say, hey, you should take a look at Mike Bailey or or, or Mark Wheeler? Um, do you have the I don't want to. I guess the power to do that in Impact Wrestling and have them look at wrestlers. I I can tell them to look at anybody I want, whether they value or you know respect my opinion enough to actually look at them. It's a different story. Uh, I will say that like my dream job uh, in the twilight of my career would be if I was still with Impact would be to be talent relations and just wrestle all these new guys on Explosion. And like so, when they get their tryouts, they're wrestling somebody that they're not just thrown in there with. That would be ideal. So, like, if Mark Wheeler got his tryout on Explosion, he'd be wrestling me, somebody that's actually going to give him an opportunity to show what he can do. Because sometimes, like, when I wrestled uh, Trevor Lee for Impact, you know, he didn't want to work with me at all. And it was a pain in the ass, and I'm going to hold it against him for the rest of my life because I think it's bullshit. But, like, like that can happen. And I just don't have that perspective. I want these guys work for this opportunity, and once they finally get it, I don't think they should be let down or given any less than 100%. So, like, that would be my dream job once I'm done my career. If you don't mind me asking, how come he didn't want to work with you? Was there, um, did he give a reason? Or, or, or I, I, I f- he feel he was miserable with his position in the company. He felt he was you know, a bigger talent and he deserved more than what he was getting of being showcased on Explosion and wrestling some local talent. Even though he knew me, we had wrestled in PWG and everything together before that. So we'd both come up in the same companies. But I don't know. It's just, uh, it's an ego thing at the end of the day. It's something that like I literally, I don't have and I never will because I just like wrestling. So if you give me an opportunity to wrestle in a ring, I'm going to try to make the best of it every single time. I'm not going to just, you know, piss and moan about it and complain, which is what he did, unfortunately. (laughs) All right. Well, so let's move on. Let's move on to one of my new favorite characters, the the dancing weapon from Backyard Pro. (laughs) So (laughs) who who came up with that idea? Who who decided that you're going to be the dancing weapon? Uh, that's just great character, but uh, did you come up with that, that idea, or did somebody else come up with it? No, uh, Gabriel Fuerza and Von Vertigo. Von Vertigo, this is his brainchild, this baby, and I guess, you know, yeah. him and Fuerza are quite close, so they kind of came up with it together. And I wasn't supposed to wrestle at all. They, It was part of the storyline for Fuerza to show up to my house and get advice as, like, the czar of canadian wrestling or something but they wanted to give me a different character so that's what they gave me and i just try to make the best of it and after the first episode was done i said that's a really cool idea i loved uh you know the commentary i thought it was funny and i said hey i'll I'll wrestle on the second one but uh like i don't want to be paid or anything i just i i would like to like help out and do whatever i can so you know we brought it back for that second well the first episode of the second you know episode or whatever however you'd explain it because they're doing three episodes for the second release and uh yeah i thought it was fun i i grew up wrestling in a basement so you know we tried to block your, it out your, your stew your impression was spot on by the way <laughs> yeah i i came up uh trained by somebody that was trained in the dungeon back in the stew Hart days so i i've heard that impression far too many times uh, even though i've yeah. never met the man and I hope you don't mind me saying so, but you you actually um you you, you rocked those tights, man. You you really pulled it off with the tights. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if my wife is uh you know happy or sad that I fit into her old wrestling tights, but uh, I managed to squeeze in there. So I just I couldn't stop laughing when you walked out, when you walked away through the when you walked past the door and you just wearing the tights. That was hysterical. Uh, but it was a good match against uh, the Cyclops cyclist uh, Adam Safe, uh, aka Kobe Durst. That was uh, the favorite part. Was the the, the concerto with the, with the toy chair was was absolutely brilliant, man. Great. Yeah, stuff. it was much different than our previous battles, but uh, you know, it was fun. All right, so um, swinging back to Impact Wrestling, Bound for Glory um, is coming up October. Any potential opponents for the North at Bound for Glory, or, or nothing? Uh, nothing set yet. Nothing is set in stone. Um, like I said before, uh, our only focus is to get those tag team championships back. So 
hopefully we'll be able to get an opportunity to do that on the biggest stage that impact has, which is their, you know, premier showcase show, which is bound for glory. And, uh, I think the world will be watching much like they were at Slammiversary. So it'll be a good spot for us to make a name for ourselves and regain what's ours. Gain those titles. That's what I'm hoping for. You guys get those titles back. Uh, so last question, and then I'll plug. I'll let, I'm sorry. I'll let you plug. I know you have a new Teespring store. I'll let you plug that. Uh, last question. There's been some Twitter buzz about it uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I know I spoke to you about it, but um, the Revival versus the North, any uh, – any inkling on when that might happen, or or if it will happen um, by any chance? Because that'll be that'll be absolutely tremendous. I know Scott Demore was was interested, possibly a home and home two out of three match series. Uh, but have you heard any more about uh, that potential uh, match? I have not. I've only read what everybody else has read on social media. I think it is the one tag team match that is going to elude everybody for a long time. And then when it finally does happen, it's going to be exactly what everyone thinks it's going to be, which is a tag team showcase for the ages. Uh, I did see somebody tweet though, that it could happen on hollow ground. Like I don't see the home and home series happening with AEW and impact working together at all. There's too many like television issues. And I, I like, I, it sounds like you would need like 20 lawyers even working on that for it to happen. So I'm not going to say that they're going to go to those lengths, but uh, uh, I heard something about the Jericho cruise being like a, an independent place where it could occur. Okay. And I, I thought it was a great idea. So we'll see if that ever comes to fruition. I'm, it, it hasn't, you know, even reached the realm of real realism and possibility to us as we haven't been contacted, but you know, for a fan to put it out there in the ether, it's uh, it'd be cool. That'd be a tremendous match, no doubt, no doubt, my friend. So um, before I let you go, I, I know, as I mentioned, you have a new Teespring store. Uh, I saw that on Facebook. So if you want to plug that store or any merchandise that you have available, any social media, uh, now's the time, man. Feel free. Yeah, I would just hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at walking underscore weapon. From there in my bio, you can find my Teespring store because it's Teespring dot com backslash something walking weapons warehouse so it's much easier to just click the link uh i have four designs up there right now with you know every garment or mask or fanny pack or cell phone case or mug or blanket you could ever imagine to have so uh, i think it's pretty cool that i can market myself into different stuff than just t-shirts so yeah i appreciate all the support and uh you know, hopefully wrestling gets back to normal soon so I can start traveling around the world again and uh, seeing people in person. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to when uh, you guys come back to Winter St. Clair College. I'm really looking forward to that day, and hopefully it'll be soon. Anyway, well, thank you so much for joining me today, Josh. I, I, every time you come on, I really appreciate it. Uh, i I just very, very thankful that uh, you continue to come on the show and uh, you're, without a doubt, one of my favorite guests, and you're always welcome, and I always enjoy talking to you, man. Yeah, same. I'll come on anytime. You know that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that, and I hope, I, I wish nothing but the best for you, and I know you're going to get those titles back uh, very, very soon. Um, and hopefully it'll be in Windsor, when, uh, and I could be there in person to see you regain those titles. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me today. This has been Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Again, want to thank my guest, Impact Wrestling Superstar, The Walking Weapon, Josh Alexander. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.